Welcome back. More than six million Jews were murdered during the Holocaust and five million non-Jews by the Nazis and their collaborators. Seventy-four years ago last month, the Soviet army entered Auschwitz and liberated more than 7,000 prisoners that were dying. <coughs> this is World War II archival footage that you're looking at. And you see the little boy in that video right there? We have him with us today. His name is Michael Bornstein, along with his daughter, Debbie Bornstein Helmstedt. Thank you so much. When did you first see that archival footage? It was a, in a movie in Indianapolis uh, called The Chosen. And we saw the picture and a close-up of my tattoo, and I was startled to find that it's me. And you looked at your tattoo? Yes, uh, this is the tattoo, and uh, uh, so I knew it was me. You knew it? right away. Exactly. So you went online to go and see where you could find it again and can you tell me Debbie, yeah. where did he find it? So that was many years later um, just a couple of years ago of course by now there's Google and you can find anything you want on the internet so we googled Children Liberation Auschwitz. If you do that tons of thumbnails come up right away of, of that, that image and my dad and I clicked <clears> on one and it took us to something called the Kado Revisionist Forum. It is a Holocaust deniers website. And it captioned that video that you were just showing. Um, this video shows the fallacy, the lies Jews have been telling that children were killed on arrival at Auschwitz. And were it, you outraged? I, we, we were disgusted. It was time to write a book, and Debbie wrote a wonderful book about it, and hopefully everyone can read it. My dad didn't speak for so many years, for 70 plus years, and that was kind of the fuel he needed to see. If there are Holocaust deniers out there talking, he needs to speak louder. And there's less and less out there uh, to tell the story, yeah. and uh, you, you were able to tell it. And um, you talk about, in it, there's going to be a presentation today, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, but um, you, you talk about how there's very little that you remember at four years old, but what, to, what comes to mind? Well, uh, basically, uh, the smell uh, that we had in Auschwitz, and I find out later it's the smell of burning flesh. And other things, you know, uh, going onto a crowded cattle car. And when I go to New York City subways now when they're crowded, it just reminds me of that. Mm -hmm. And then you lost your brother and your father. Yes. Almost immediately when you made it to Auschwitz. Exactly. The men uh, were separated and I went to a children's bunk. And somehow your mom was able to sneak you t to your grandmother to the women's bunk. That's exactly right. And the women were very, very meticulous in hiding me. And I'm told I was a very good hider. You think that's the only way you were able to survive? Uh, that's exactly right, because the kids were older in the children's bunk, and you get a slice of bread a day, and they were taking my bread. So my mother would come into the children's bunk. She'd be beaten over the head and give me some of her bread. Well, Michael and his daughter wrote the New York Times bestseller, The Survivors Club, the true story of a very young prisoner of Auschwitz. They're speaking today, and that information is on your screen at 2 p.m., and the address is at 2020 Brown Deer Road. So we will have more mm -hmm. of them after the break, including your message that you're trying to keep alive, especially after there's been many anti-Semitic attacks recently. 